So question three is all about impulse, uh, Newton's second law, and you've got this FT graph over here. And this is kind of what happens when, when balls are impacted, there's not this steady force. What you find is the force grows to a maximum and then decreases. So using the graph uh, to find the maximum force applied to the ball, I just read it off here as 48 Newtons. And the time uh, the boot is in contact is to 0 0.25 seconds. So easy marks for just reading some data off the graph. And they've been kind here. They haven't used kilonewtons or milliseconds. They've used newtons and seconds. Now it says here that the mean force applied, uh, multiplied by the time is called the impulse. Uh, and in this case, it's about 6.5 newton seconds. So explain how you use the graph to show that the impulse has this value. Well, basically you can then use the area under the curve. The area under the curve here is equal to the impulse of the force because it's equal to the force multiplied by the time. How do you actually find that? Well, what you need to do is you need to count the squares. So one mark for saying it's the area under the curve and the second thing is actually the method that you'd use, which is counting squares. So part B wants to look at um, the maximum acceleration and you get the maximum acceleration when you have the maximum force. Now, Newton's second law, uh, the, the kind of simplified version, is F equals ma, so the acceleration equals force over mass. The force that we got, so this is my answer from the first part, is 48. We know the mass is 0 0.6, and therefore you divide these two together, and you find that the answer is 80 metres per second squared. The second bit is wanting you to find the final speed of the ball. Now, this one here, um, basically we know that the impulse, which is force times time, is equal to the change in momentum. Remember, Newton's second law states that the force is or equal to the rate of change of momentum. We know that u is equal to zero, and therefore we can say that this impulse is equal to the m times v. We can then say that the impulse, ft, over m is equal to the final velocity, v. And uh, I must say, the first one I did this, I didn't read the question, I actually worked out the area under the graph, but it actually gave you the impulse as 6.5 in the previous question. So, the impulse is 6.5, the mass is 0 0.6, and that which leaves you the final velocity as 10.83, which again, to two significant figures, is 11 meters per second. Finally, part C. Uh, this one here, it comes up so many times. There's so many examples where you've got um, the, a ball maybe hitting a wall or something hitting a tennis racket and rebounding. So it comes in with a speed of 11 meters per second, and it rebounds with a speed of six meters per second and the impact lasts for 0 0.18 of a second. So calculate the mean force exerted on the, by the ball on the wall. Well, Newton's second law, the force is equal to the rate of change in momentum, so mv minus mu over t. And this is where people make a mistake. People think that it starts at 11, ends up at 6, and therefore the change in velocity is 5. It's not that, because what we have is the velocity is a vector, and therefore the direction is important. So um, the final velocity is 6, you take away the initial velocity, which in this case would be minus 11. Uh, that's provided we say that maybe this direction is a positive direction. And therefore, uh, you divide that by the time, and the force is 56.67, which is 57 newtons. Now, I know that so many people in this time, they're going to say, well, it's equal to um, uh, the mass times 11 minus the mass times 6. And they're going to get a value of the force, which is far too small. So just be aware. And draw a diagram at it. it doesn't take very long at all, but then that lets you know that the velocity has indeed changed direction. So that's question three. On to question four.